Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping by my ham shack for a ham shack chat. This time, I'm going to do a review of the RT Systems radio programming software for the Kenwood TS-890S amateur radio, which is right here. Uh, first, my standard disclaimer. I do not work for either RT Systems or Kenwood, nor am I receiving any kind of consideration for making this video. In other words, neither company sponsors this content and I'm not making any money. Call me! That said, I'm a big fan and would generally recommend RT Systems and Kenwood Radios. Kenwood mostly because that's what I've always used, but the RT Systems because it makes using those radios a lot easier, whether it's a handheld, a mobile, or a base station. Please see the link below for more information about and purchasing of the RT system software. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the features of the RT system software that are applicable to the TS-890S and the one feature that I wish they would add to the software programming uh, for this uh, radio. Let's start by taking a look at the RT system software. This is the TS-890S programmer. And uh, you can see this is a normal, standard type of display that you will always get uh, with uh, RT system software. So it looks familiar to you. It is, uh, it has the look of say an Excel or an Access uh, database display. However, it's neither of those. Uh, this is what uh, our friends at RT Systems have developed. I'll put a card up in the corner so you can see the usefulness of using similar func uh, similar pages. Uh, let's go take a look at our settings. We can go to our radio menu settings and these are all of the settings that you would get uh, if, if you wanted to uh, make a change and you can save these settings when you save your information. Uh, so everything you want there, if you want to go to your advanced menu settings, this is what you got. So those, those are the advanced menu settings and common menu settings. These are things that you probably want to use really quickly if you need to. So you get you, those, those are all there. We're going to go ahead and close that up. Now let's take a look at quickly loading up some local frequencies. Uh, and what we want to do is go to external data and use the repeater book search. And you can take a look at what I've done uh, previously when I showed you how to use the repeater book to program my THD 74 uh, handheld and uh, we're going to do the same thing this time but we're going to be looking at 10 meter and 6 meter and I'm just going to go okay now you see that I have populated that I can go ahead and do selected bands down here so there we go, 10 meter and 6 meter. And these are uh, repeaters, uh, 10 meter repeaters and 6 meter repeaters. Notice that down here I've done uh, name is, is by call sign uh, and comment is city. So say I want to uh, group all my cities together or put them alphabetically, I can come up here, click there, and you'll see this little uh, up caret. You can click that, and now I'm reverse alphabetical, and click it again, and I'm sorted alphabetically. These are all my 10 meter and 6 meter radios uh, available within that 100 miles. Now what I want to do is create a file for the TS-890. What 
this is this is not an uploadable uh, for file here this is so we're going to go back here I'm going to create a file now this is an uploadable file but if you come up here and check my settings you'll see that all my settings have probably gone back to uh, the default uh, and uh, the way I check it is I look for my uh, data bit oh, that that is my default settings uh, this this first one my com port is actually the 57600 so I know that this is not what I want but let me close this and we're going to highlight these now I could upload this directly but then I would also be uploading my settings so I know I like my settings over here under the initial one we're going to right click this and we're going to copy them I'm going to click over here right click and paste and here we go uh, I've got my 6 meter and 10 meter FM repeaters uh, alphabetically sorted by city. Now let's go ahead and upload this and while I am uploading this I'm going to send this data to the radio. I will uh, fast forward this a little bit. So send data to radio and it gives you these instructions and it tells me insert the cable into the DB9 jack on the back of the TS-890. Well uh, I'm not doing that, uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm going to go OK, and it's saying, well, you know what? You got, uh, these are my USBs. Uh, COM3 is my enhanced, and COM4 is my standard, and I want to use my enhanced to do this upload. Okay, so now this should be what I have loaded up, and uh, I'm going to go ahead here and get rid of these, get rid of these, and I'm going to uh, go to communications, and I'm going to get my data from my radio. Everything else stays the same, still want COM3, and I'm reading it, and you see it comes down pretty fast. So let's take a look at that uh, speed and you should see it set to 57, that, there it was, there it was, to 57,600. So that tells me that that is my actual one that I started with. In other words, this untitled and this initial are identical. So I'm going to click I'm going to go no, and I'm going to click that, and go no. So let's go back, and I'm going to tell you the one feature that I really wish they had included in this software programming package. There is one feature that I wish they did include, which I cover in the video that I will direct you to at the end of the content. This feature would be to provide access to the equalizer settings. Uh, being able to adjust the equalizer settings to what I prefer than save them would save me a whole bunch of time and be very helpful overall. I'm hoping that someone at RT Systems watches this and will add it to their list of scheduled upgrades. However, this is not a deal breaker. Because my TS 890 is my primary shack rig with my FT991A as a backup rig, I don't plan on going mobile with it anytime soon. Not going to be taking it out to a park, uh, not going to hook it up in my car, it's just not going to happen. So I don't plan on having a need to download uh, from the repeater book database very often. But, you know, I will check it every few months in case a new 10 or 6 meter repeater is added. 
The quick access to the menu settings will be helpful if I need to change your configuration and the ability to store a known good setup will be an invaluable time saver if I ever need to do something like a full reset on the radio. Please take a moment to give me a like. Please like me. Please. By popping that thumbs up icon. Please share. What about sharing? This with your friends and others who may be interested in using the RT system software with the TS-890, uh, especially on social media, please, and leave a comment. Questions? Comments? With any questions or remarks or with your experiences in using this software or even this radio. And finally, please consider subscribing. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, Braz. Here's a recent video that I did about using the free ARCP 890 radio software provided by Kenwood for use with the 890. This software does contain access to the equalizers, but it's a bit clunky and not as intuitive as the RT system software. 73 until the next Hey Y'all. Always at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.